Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to this session on SQAA, that is School Quality Assessment and Assurance, right? School Quality Assessment and Assurance is a initiative. It's an initiative from a CBSC to encourage self-evaluation by all the schools. It increases accountability, collaboration, and innovation. So it's a beautiful program uh, which ensures quality. It is not for ranking of the schools. It is just to bring about some sort of an accountability and quality in the way CBSC is imparting education, right? So it's uh, it's something which is correlated to what is going on in our present education system. We know that there are rapid changes coming up in this part of the decade after the uh, NEP 2020 was launched. Uh, a lot of initiatives have been uh, initiated by CBSC in this direction. And this is going to be incorporated as part of this. And so every school has to undergo this assessment. Now, what is this assessment about? I'm going to simplify the whole document. If you've gone through the document, it's 200 plus pages. And uh, what is relevant for basically educators, that part I'm going to explain in detail. The rest of the portions I'm going to hurry up and explain in brief as possible so that uh, we get a fair idea of what has to be done in the immediate uh, course of action, what is the things that has to be kept in mind and so on, right? So on this note, uh, welcome to all those who are attending this webinar. First thing that we have to understand is that every school has a vision, right? Every school has a vision. And the vision of uh, the school quality assessment is basically that uh, every stakeholder, now who are the stakeholders in a school? It is the kids, the teachers, the parents, the principal, the management, the alumni, all the people who are involved with the schools, they are <clears throat> continuously striving for improvement, right? And will benefit the students. So the main stakeholder is, of course, the student. So we are doing everything for the students. So everything that we do in the school has to ensure that the learning outcome of the student will become better, right? So our crux, our vision is to provide quality education. Now we see in many rural settings in tier two, tier three cities, except for the top cities with top-notch infrastructure, we find that classes are going on even in small buildings under trees as well. We will be surprised at the way the education is going on in different schools. Uh, 50 to 60 students are packed in small rooms and done. So that's the thing of the past. Now we are looking for a new vision and the vision is what? to provide quality education through a standardized instrument or a standardized procedure, right? There will be a standardized procedure to evaluate uh, whether the school is functioning as per the CBSE protocols and norms. So there will be two aspects which I will be explaining. One is the self-evaluation process and one will be an external assessment. And there will be benchmarks, points allotted to all this, right? So are the institutions running as per or in accordance with the CBSA rules. That is what we have to understand. So that is basically the vision of this document or the vision of SQAA, SQAA which uh, is relevant for all of us working as teachers in different parts of India or wherever the world is. So that was the vision. Now is the mission, our target. Uh, what is our minute? So the first vision the CBSC says that is to promote interconnectedness and so all the stakeholders of the schools that is the students the management principal the local community members the alumni members the friends of the schools so different different uh, organizations who are connected to your schools they come together to improve student outcomes and they have to review and reflect all the scholastic and post-scholastic processes and bring about changes in them so there is a reflection and there will be some steps to uh, remedial measures to increase the uh, learning outcomes in the students. So it has to be student-centric, of course, and the curriculum has to be non-discriminatory in nature and not against any community, religion, caste, creed, etc., as per the democratic values of our country. And with, there has to be a culture of openness, transparency, and objectivity, right? And so the schools are empowered to do this 
and systematic self evaluation you know even as individuals it's important that we evaluate ourselves as teachers we need to evaluate ourselves where do we stand what is my weakness what is my strength how can i become better and better and better so no teacher can say i am perfect so i am not going to learn anything it's a continuous process right so as good teachers we have to be good learners uh, a good learner can only be a good teacher right so they are interconnected so unless we learn we cannot teach right so it's a continuous process it's a dynamic process it's not static so we share our experiences and expertise so every batch that you are teaching you will realize that the value that you are giving to your students is more because you have gained experience of one year and that you are giving back to the students so that is why it is important that we improve the quality of our students as we uh, gain in experience and expertise the objectives of this document is basically uh, uh, the main points that I can uh, find from the document is that first to review the what is happening in your schools. So every school may be at level A, B, C, D, whatever we don't know. So we have to review what are the practices that are being followed. Uh, is it a good practice? Can we improve upon this practice? Or what are the things that we can do to uh, uh, you know uh, improve and uh, increase the productivity? in terms of the marks, can we improve something? In terms of the infrastructure, can we do something? In terms of the relationship between parents, students, and teachers, can we do something? So this data is to be collected, right? So we know that um, uh, most of the schools are doing, but many schools are still in uh, the stage of nascency where nothing is happening. In fact, many of uh, them were not even aware that such a document uh, exists and some of them are already working on this document and started this process of assessments they're reading the document awareness so the first step is awareness and today's session is basically uh, to create awareness of what this document is because uh, the for the first three years it's not mandatory but they are going to make this mandatory at some point of time right so at some point of time when it becomes mandatory and then you start implementing it becomes a mess right so it's important that we understand what it is so it, uh, of course, accountability, innovation, all these are things which the CBC wants the schools to uh, learn. And therefore, what is going to happen is that, uh, you know, they had created these hubs of learning and uh, and where all the neighborhood schools collaborate. And, uh, you know, they, whatever is the best resource they will share. And so that the learning outcomes becomes better and better. So this is what the objective is. Uh, ultimately, the student is the most important person in this whole uh, uh, idea of this document. And we have to enhance the learning outcome by whatever means possible, right? So who are the people who are eligible for the SQA? All CBC schools, right? So we are not talking about the state board ICC at the moment because this document is all the schools affiliated with CBSE, and it becomes very, very important for schools wanting CBSE affiliation. There are many schools who are uh, aspiring for uh, CBSE affiliation. It's important for them. So every school affiliated to CBSE or those schools who want to get affiliated with CBSE have to understand this document. And therefore, it is important that we understand each and every domain. There are eight domains, which I will be explaining right now. So uh, uh, the core values, of course, is the promoting use of technology. We saw that COVID taught us many things. And one of the things that as educators, we learned was technology. Students were already aware of this. But uh, as educators, we learned a lot of stuff uh, from basics, PowerPoint, uh, to you know advanced chat GPT and artificial intelligence. All this, the educators learned in the past two, three years. And therefore, if you look at the whole framework, it is promoting use of technology. Uh, and of course, research and innovation plays a very important uh, role in this. And of course, the entire education system is to increase employability skills. Uh, our students are studying hard, they, but they are not employable because the skills are not there. So a lot of uh, training in values in terms of life skills is important. So there is a lot of emphasis on life skills so that they can be employed somewhere. And of course, to create global citizens. We are not talking about, you know, we belong to Kerala or Punjab or Bengal or Maharashtra. We are talking about uh, a global citizenship, not about Indians or Americans or Britishers. And what is important at this point of time is to create global citizens where the world is one. And that's how we can progress. And so it's a beautiful document. And in accordance to this, if we move, I'm sure the changes will be visible in the coming years. 
So uh, to understand the whole thing, uh, uh, they have divided into eight domains. Okay, the eight domains are there. So this is the first thing that we have to understand. And what are these eight domains? Now remember, these eight domains are not independent. They are all interlinked. So we cannot say that, you know, principal's role or teacher's role or students or parents or alumni there. So it's all interdependent. And I will just explain how uh, we can make it uh, more um, uh, connected and how it is uh, dependent on each other. We will be understanding. So just to understand, if you have not seen this picture, this explains what are our eight domains. So you can take about a minute to understand the eight domains. The first, of course, the scholastic so we are in school process. So scholastic is the most important uh, part of this domain. That is, uh, what is the student learning in terms of the curriculum? So curriculum is an important part of the domain, number one. So that is scholastic uh, processes. Then the co-scholastic, very, very important, which we were neglecting over a period of time. So you have music, dance, art, puppetry, clay modeling, uh, you know, physical education, uh, you have a lot of other things besides the scholastic, so a, which we used to call extracurricular. That is uh, gaining more and more importance uh, in even in the uh, documents that was released in accordance to the NEP and NCF. We saw that co-curricular processes are important. So we have scholastic as number one, right? This is clear. Second is co-scholastic. That is also clear. Third is infrastructure. Now, as teachers, we don't have much role over there, but infrastructure is basically up which the school management principal or the senior level, uh, you know, Carter teachers, uh, or maybe in the PTA, all those who are involved in that will try to do this part. That is infrastructure, how to give better facilities to the students, better washrooms, playgrounds, uh, what are the other facilities that can be provided to the students? That is the infrastructure. Human resources, that is, again, we are involved the teachers, the office staff, the non-teaching staff, uh, all the people, human resources are basically the people involved. So alumni, the friends of the schools, uh, there are benefactors, then there are parent-teacher associations. So all the associations, every, every human being involved in the functioning of a school is what is human resources. Inclusive practices. This is very important again as per NEP. Uh, there has to be inclusive education. We have had multiple webinars on that as well. Uh, about inclusive education. So suppose a child is um, uh, having special needs, we have to incorporate some systems by which that child is also included in the normal system of learning and not, uh, you know, suggest that they have to go to special schools and so on. So this is the inclusive practices, management and governance, how the school is being run. That means you have a senior management, you have middle level management, then you have supervisors, you have coordinators, how they are going to ensure the best learning outcomes possible. You have heads of the departments, you have class coordinators. So all this, um, how they are going to govern this whole thing, right? Then leadership, of course, the principal and uh, vice principal and uh, at the senior level, they will be doing manufacturing satisfaction. Now, this is very important. Are the teachers satisfied going to a school? Are we excited coming to school and doing the work, right? Are the children excited to come? Are the parents uh, satisfied with what is going on in the school? Is the alumni happy uh, with what is happening in the school? Are the associations and friends of the schools or the various organizations also there? So that is what benefactory satisfaction means. So you see the eight domains who beautifully interlinked. So again, I'm repeating the first one, scholastic curriculum, post-scholastic, the extracurricular activities, the infrastructure, that is the building and uh, facilities, human resources, the people involved, inclusive practices, that means children with all type of needs, management and governance, that means how the whole thing is planned and implemented, leadership principal and uh, senior vice principal or coordinators and so on, beneficiary satisfaction, anybody associated with the school, how happy are they? with the uh, running of the school. So these are the eight domains, right? So this eight domains have got um, a self-assessment and an external assessment, right? So, so this whole assessment is divided into two parts, right? Two essential phases. The first part is self-assessment, right? It's important that we assess ourselves. What is, uh, where do we stand? That is the self-assessment part. And this has to be uploaded on the CBC portal every year by the school. It is uh, mandatory that once in three years, you have to do this phase one, right? Once in three years. So every three years, you can do it. 
and this self assessment you have to upload on the cbc portal and phase 2 can be done by an external team is done not can be it is done by an external team either by demand on demand so school is asking the external agency to come and inspect or the cbc can say okay we are coming to you and uh, there can there can be a random inspection uh, in your, in in your school it can be done by the hubs of learning that means you can collaborate with the neighborhood school so you go to another school they come to your school so it can be done that way or the CBSE identifies some schools which require support and they do this. So it can be in multiple ways that can be done. So there has to be an external assessment and there will be an internal assessment. So these are the two phases of the assessment that is going to happen. One is the internal phase one and one is the external, right? So uh, this uh, school has to update this information on the eight domains. All the eight domains have to be covered. Not that, you know, we are not doing one, two, three, and we are doing only this, this, no. On all the eight domains, they have to do this. And therefore, to complete this, we have to familiarize ourselves with the eight domains. So just now I explained to you what is that. So it will help the school to uh, assess how the school is doing and uh, review and improve the institution and use the feedback to plan the future. So that is why this SQAA is developed so that we review and take action on what is going wrong and how can we do better. So this self-assessment is going to be done uh, and then also the external assessment and then they have to upload it on the portal, right? So this is the, uh, as far as the assessment is concerned. Now, who does the assessment? There will be a core team. Now, what is the core team that is going to be there? There has to be a member representative of the school management. So school management, one person will be there. Uh, the principal definitely has to be part of this team because he's ultimate authority in a particular school. Uh, then there has to be three teachers, one from primary, one from the middle level, one from secondary and senior secondary. So four teachers, yeah. So one will, there will be a primary teacher. That means from classes KG to five, up to five, there will, there will be one teacher who's involved in this. Middle school, that is 6, 7, 8, there will be one school. Secondary, that is 9 and 10, there will be one teacher. And senior secondary, that is 11th and 12th, there will be one teacher. So four teachers, principal, four teachers, then that management committee, uh, school management uh, member. And also, see one very beautiful thing, all the committees so far were concerned of only principal and teachers and senior people. Now the first time we are including students in the team. Very beautiful, right? Because the students also are today need a voice and this is something which has been incorporated in SQAA. Are the students opinion taken into consideration? Yes, in this, yes. So one student again, one from primary, one from middle, one from senior, uh, one from secondary and one from senior secondary. So four teachers and four students we have to take. So two members of PTA, so parent teacher association, we are taking two and one teacher from the co-curricular domain. So this is, they are giving importance to that teacher also. Uh, it could be a music teacher, it could be dance, it could be drama, clay modeling, whatever, anything besides the curricular domain, co-curricular activities, one teacher of that. Then one counselor or special educator has to be there and one representative from the admin. So it's a, it's a fairly uh, big team, I would say. Uh, comprising of four students, four teachers, principal, one management committee member, two members of the PTA is there, then co-curricular activity, one teacher is there, then one uh, special educator or counselor is there and one team, one person from the admin. So we have a good team and obviously they'll be able to make a good uh, assessment of what is happening in the school. So this is our core team who's going to do the assessment. All the 100 teachers will not be involved, but we should be aware of the parameters on which the judgment is done so that we can improve the quality of our teaching and the assessment of our school goes well, right? So this is what the core team's composition is. Now, what happens in the self-assessment? This is what uh, I'm going to explain next. What happens in the self-assessment? Now, in the self-assessment, there are four processes. The first process is a review. Review means what is our current status, right? What is our current status? So, where are we now? Where are we standing? Are we okay? Are we average? Are we good? Are we very good? Are we excellent? Your current position, you will be able to assess. Okay, what are the things we are doing right? What are the things that are going wrong? What can be improved? All this is review, right? So this is review. So the team that I just now uh, showed as per the protocol, we have to form that team of the students, teachers, principal, and so on. 
and this team is going to decide the review this and then they want to reflect and the reflection is very important so why because there are certain things which are working in our school certain things which are not working so what is the vision and mission of our school that everybody knows so are we going to do something to rectify the problems that we have identified in step one that is our reflection so where do we want to go where is our destination that we have to think about and to get there what has to be done that comes in step number three that is respond so first we are reviewing we are identifying reflection means we are thinking about uh, something that we intend to achieve right we are identifying our weaknesses and we know exactly what is not working and we know that uh, how do we want to get there so that is our response so how do we go about it now comes the implementation part we have identified our weakness we have identified what the problem problem areas are and now the response comes in terms of implementation that means what are we going to do how are we going to get there and then of course the rate that is again the evaluation process did all that we do work what we planned did it work and if not work then what went wrong again there is a rating of that so is uh, what we are do doing is it correct is it going to make a difference all those things are uh, done in the rate I hope this is very clear. The four steps involved in an assessment is self-assessment is first is the review, then we are reflecting, then we are responding, and then we are rating ourselves for what we did, right? So this part is clear. Now we go further. Now, this was the self-assessment. In the self-assessment, this brings about more clarity that what should be done. So there is a review. Step one was the review. So where are we now? What are we doing? and uh, why we are doing what we are doing, okay? So something is happening in our school, there must be a reason for that. So all that is the process that is involved in the review and what is the action plan? So action plan is of course to understand the SQAA framework, the policies of CBSE, uh, the documents that are available to us, the CBSE circulars, <clears throat> then we have to engage in more and more collaborative learning. Then the reflection comes, that is step number two. Step number two says, where do we want to go? What is working? What is not? That is the reflection. No, it's an introspection. Uh, uh, how do we get uh, to our destination? What are our strengths? Uh, all the <clears throat> gaps that are identified that has to be uh, listed out. And we are going to document this. And that's how the reflection takes place. That is step number two. And step number three is the response. That means we are going to devise some strategies. We are going to identify the areas on which we are going to give priority. We are going to give uh, roles and responsibilities. We know that in our school, we have multi-talented personalities. So we can identify these people and give them roles. We know that some are leaders, some are good workers, some are very good uh, orators, some are very good motivators. So different roles can be given. Some are very creative so uh, the role of uh, uh, an educator is not only go to the classroom and teach. The role of the educator will come in different uh, forms in, in terms of this document. So uh, every action that we take, we have heard this innumerable times, should, that should be SMART, S-M-A-R-T, SMART, which means <clears throat> that it should be uh, SMART, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. Not that we are talking about a 100-year plan. We, we are talking about a realistic target that after the end of one year or after six months or after two years, what are we going to do? And it has to be achievable. We cannot put a, a target like all the students in my class should get 100% in maths or 100% in English. So it has to be realistic. So whatever is your present status, we are going to improve upon that. That's, that's a more realistic target. It has to be measurable, right? So statistically or in terms of the previous performance when we are doing, there has to be a measurement and it has to show some improvement. And we are going to use some tools to measure this improvement. Then there has to be a feedback from various sources and we have to document this entire thing. And the main thing again and again they have specified is that to engage in collaborative learning, right? And then comes the step number four, that how are we going to evaluate our effort? Is it going to make a difference? We are going to monitor each and every uh, process. The process, 
uh, as per the roles and responsibilities given to different people, we are going to rate them. We are going to uh, review what is the strength and how can we improve further. Again, we have to document all this and then we will have to submit on the portal. <clears throat> so that was about the internal assessment. Now we come to the external evaluation process. So the first step internal is uh, in the school itself. And then what happens? There is an external evaluation team. Now, external evaluation team will consist of uh, some ex-principal or some serving principals or some uh, officer that is uh, who is associated with CBSC or some senior educator who is a CBSC moderator or someone the CBSC selects for uh, affiliation and inspection uh, processes. So uh, that's what uh, the normal criteria is. And obviously, they are not going to come and threaten you or anything. They are supposed to uh, give advice on what uh, can be done better. So they are they are basically it's going to be an advisory team. So it's uh, they are very clear, uh, clearly said that it has to be a non-threatening in nature, not that they are going to come and scold you on things uh, which you are not doing. And this has to be very confidential, not that the assessment team is coming and oh this happened at that school, this happened and that. It's a very confidential thing. So uh, whatever happens in your school, they are supposed to keep it confidential. And if you are an assessor, you are supposed to keep it confidential, right? So the uh, peer assessment, external assessment team is going to be sent to your school. And uh, again, there will be steps in this, just like we had steps in the internal evaluation. Here also, there will be steps of the external evaluation, right? In the external uh, evaluation, the uh, the... The step number four, the submission of the school assessment, the whatever has been uh, prepared by the school, that is going to be submitted. The school will upload this and there is going to be that, that those documents are going to be examined by the visiting team. And as mentioned, it's going to be optional. The visiting team will not come for the first three years, but definitely after three years, it's going to become mandatory where they will check all these documents which you have uploaded, whether it has been done in the rightful spirit or not. And then <clears throat> there will be a report prepared by this team. Uh, they will uh, collaborate with the existing uh, uh, the team that is doing there in their own schools. They will collaborate with them, find out uh, what they have done is correct or not, or whether... Uh, there was some lacuna or there is some areas which can be improved upon and they will sum submit their report to CBSC. So when we are doing a self-assessment report, one will be an external report and <clears throat> there will be a request for support by the school. So in case the school requires some help, they can also request that. So the CBC will facilitate all that and uh, they will uh, make arrangements for to make the school better right so it's a it's it's a beautiful program basically our students have to benefit and i think if we take the spirit of the document it's beautiful and uh, uh, learning outcomes are definitely going to improve with this okay so if i uh, again uh, classify this document we are having domains and subdomains so let's say the scholastic process is our domain. Yeah. So the schools have all subjects, maths, physics, chemistry, science, English, you know, the languages uh, you have. All this are your scholastic social sciences, economics and all that. The other scholars. So that's the domain. Now, the subdomain will come the, uh, the curriculum planning. Now, how are we going to implement? The curriculum cannot be designed by us. us. That is already given to us by CBSE and we are following the NCRT books. That cannot be designed by us. So how are we going to plan means the implementation part. What are we going to do in our classes? So, uh, you know, we are already doing the experiential learning and art integrated learning. So that becomes a subdomain, the planning part, the curriculum implementation part. And uh, the sub subdomain will be that the principal and teachers are familiar with the spirit and content of NCF, right? So the national curriculum framework, the, the, the essence of that every educator has to know. Otherwise, what is going to happen? We will not be able to take action in the true spirit. Okay, I, uh, so somebody who's got 20 years or 25 years of experience cannot continue with the same uh, notebooks and notes they have been using, you know, for uh, decades. Things have changed. Now, we are no longer the only source of information. Uh, students are getting information from n number of places. There are uh, n number of reference books. There are so many uh, websites which is giving you information. Uh, online material is available. Uh, there are so many edtech companies giving uh, free videos. There are so many YouTube channels. So there is, we are just facilitators. Okay, we are just facilitators. 
in the whole process. So what is important for us now is, of course, giving knowledge is uh, mandatory um, or I can say it is important. But at the same time, what is important for us is to be empathetic to the student's need. Uh, we have to change with the times. We cannot maintain the same kind of, uh, you know, the same kind of relationship that we had 10 years back. Because, you know, that time the teacher was dominant. In many of the classrooms, uh, you see that the teacher is still on a pedestal. Uh, and, uh, you know, and in many schools, the teacher is sitting down with the students and doing the work. So that creates a, a, a big difference. So if you consider yourself that you are on a pedestal, then obviously the spirit of this whole uh, NCF gets lost because uh, the whole crux of this document is that uh, the teachers are facilitators. We help the child to learn and uh, become better. Okay, more than knowledge providers, we have to uh, you know make them look in the right direction. That is important, giving them the right path. Okay, so. Uh, how can we get familiar with this? Of course, this document is a beautiful document. As I said, it runs 200 plus pages. So it's difficult for us to go through it. It takes a little bit of time. But at least when you're attending sessions like this, you know the crux of it and you know what it is at least. So you somebody's talking about uh, you know school quality assessment. Uh, you should not be blank about it. So you should know that there are eight domains. There is an internal evaluation. There is an external evaluation going to take place. What are the evidences uh, that has to be kept? How are we going to upload this to the CBSE site? All this is important, right? So if I look this, uh, look at this chart here that is given here. So uh, on the first column is the statement. The statement that is the uh, statement that there is a well-defined structure. <clears throat> okay. Uh, there is a mechanism of monitoring. These are all assessment uh, questions. Uh, teachers are encouraged to implement the recommendations of NCF. They plan their lessons. <coughs> Orientation programs are conducted or not. So all this is questions. Now, on the basis of this question, there is a score, 4, 3, 2, 1, or 0, right? 4, 3, 2, 1. So the highest score being 4 and the lowest being 1. Okay. So this course, I will tell you how uh, we have to do. Uh, then the evidences, of course, we cannot give a random score without evidence. So what are the documents that they are having? Are you having a chronicle with you? Are you having a school policy document? Uh, do you have the minutes of a meeting that was conducted by the core team? Do you have an annual curriculum plan? Uh, do you have a school calendar where these activities are planned? Uh, where are the students' records? Do teachers keep anecdotal records? So multiple ways of uh, recording the evidences uh, are there and that can be done. And what are the tools that we are uh, doing? Tools or the instruments that uh, are used. So, <clears throat> so one to four is given a score ranging from one to four. And the, at the end, uh, there will be totaling of all these scores and the school will be assigned the final score, right? So <clears throat> moving ahead. So what are the... Uh, things that we have to keep in mind here now. So here, the SQAA instruments. So there will be a teacher orientation interaction form. There will be a classroom observation scale. Are the classes happening, uh, you know, uh, as per uh, the lesson plan that is being conducted? Are the students participating? Is the teacher prepared? Is the lesson plan prepared in advance? Is there interaction between the students and the uh, teacher? Are is there are there teaching aids? Is the blackboard being used or is technology being used? So so many other the questionnaire will give you an idea. So the questionnaire uh, sample I'll give you. It's also in the document. You can download that. So there will be a questionnaire for not only for teachers. It will be there for students. It will be for parents. It will be for non-teaching staff. Everybody who is a stakeholder has to participate in this. Nobody can be left out in this. That's the beauty of this. You cannot say that, okay, you cannot take part in this. Everybody, every stakeholder is there. Teacher, student, parent, not teaching staff, office staff, everybody is there, right? Safety checklist. So the fire, the water systems, you know, are you providing a good drinking water to the students? Is the Are this fire, um, you know, have you got all the certificates for that? Are the safety measures in place? All this is the safety checklist. Then gender sensitivity, if uh, you know it's a, a co-ed school, then the gender sensitivity is very important. Uh, then the <clears throat> scorecard, everything, the mentoring checklist. So all this, there are different instruments so that uh, I would be discussing to you. I'll be showing you a glimpse of that. 
so that you get an idea of how to do this, right? Going further, <clears throat> so if you look at the questionnaire, there are total 84 uh, items in this, 84 uh, areas where questions are asked. So if you look at the first one, there are 13 items in the, so eight domains is clear, right? So there are 13 items in the scholastic process, 14 in the co-scholastic areas, 14 in the infrastructure, 11 human resources, inclusive practices, seven questions, right? Management and governance, 13, leadership, five, beneficiary satisfaction, seven, total 84. So 84 questions are there. So this questionnaire will be available to us online and the schools will just fill in this and attach these scanned copies of the relevant documents supporting that why you gave four or three or two or one. So it has to be an honest assessment as far as self-assessment is concerned. And of course, the external team will give their assessment, right? <clears throat> so uh, because the external team will verify the responses uh, that the, whoever has made the self-assessment, they will validate that. So the, there will be a school dashboard where all this will be validated and uh, uh, a score will be given. So if I look at the domains, if I look at the domains, the of the, the first one is the scholastic uh, process. <clears throat> In the scholastic process, the questions will be related to the curriculum planning, okay? The teaching learning process, what I'm teaching, the learning outcome, am I achieving that? Uh, is the school maintaining the optimum teaching periods for a particular subject? Is the student teacher ratio okay? Uh, is the teacher using multiple ways of teaching the subjects? Then student performance, are the, are the students doing well? Are the students continuously coming to school? Uh, are the question papers uh, being prepared in a balanced way? All these will come in the uh, scholastic process that is domain number one, right? Domain number one is all about scholastic. So this, at the end of the session, at least the domains you should know and what are the areas because uh, that comes in our mind and automatically we can plan out things. So the first domain, as teachers also, it's the most important for us. That is our scholastic process. Second domain, <clears throat> of course, this is the uh, before that. This is, as I said, the point system. How are we going to give? So if uh, you feel that everything is okay and our curriculum is doing, our school is doing extremely well in the planning. We have a team who decides on all this. We give opportunities to our young teachers in expressing their opinion. Our students are doing well. So then we will give four. Okay, then this means that everything is excellent. Governance and leadership exhibits accountability, responsibility, self-evaluation, improvement, planning. Everything is strong benchmark is there. So four. If it is stable, then we'll give three. That means the systems are good, but there is scope of improvement. People are aware of everything, but still there are some things which can be improved. Right. So stable, that's point two. And uh, three and two is that you have a plan, but it's uh, a lot of mistakes are there in the planning and implementation and there are a lot of areas uh, which are on the weaker side too and one is that means you are at the initial stage and uh, everybody is doing things individually there is no collective effort as such so if you have four sections and uh, four teachers all of them are doing different things then that means you are at the inceptive stage you will give only point number one so the practices have to be collective and because the learning out outcome of a school has to be uh, defined right? It cannot be based on a section uh, where the teacher is teaching, right? So it's important. And uh, if none of them are true, they're also saying that no score need to be given against the sub sub domain. So you, it's not that you have to give minimum one, you can also give zero, because it's mentioned in the note, which is below the uh, this table, that if none of the above are true, then no score need to be given against the concerned sub, -sub domain. So that means you can give from four, the highest to zero. Right. So that's how we give the points <clears throat> in this. Now, uh, the first one was the curriculum. Now, this is the. Yeah. So uh, moving ahead, we go to the next domain. Yeah, also in the first domain, it is important that uh, the assessments uh, that the school is doing, are they OK? Uh, are the minutes of the meeting being recorded? Uh, are the learning outcomes being shared by the parents and the students? Are the students being periodically assessed through, uh, you know, periodic tests? 
so uh, that is important so the teachers diary the chronicle everything should have a record of this there should be evidence in the teachers diary and uh, the communication with the parents through sms or through the school diary all that has to be uh, recorded right in this also the attendance is very uh, important there was also a document uh, by the delhi directorate in which attendance plays a very very important role so in the attendance also the questionnaire of the, the scholastic area will consist of questions uh, regarding the attendance that means is the child regular to school are we communicating to the parents if the child is absent uh, are, is the parent writing a note in the diary uh, when there is absent uh, when the child is absent for a long time are we finding out the reason and sending him to a counselor <clears throat> or does the family require some help uh, is the teacher and the counselor special educator principal involved in a follow up action are we aware of students who are absent and what are we doing about it so that all is uh, part of the questionnaire right now we come to the next part that is the domain 2 that is the post scholastic so first part is uh, it's it's a good, it's has a lot of questions the second part is of course the post scholastic the post scholastic domain as i told you is about um, art literary uh, your uh, music dance and all that <clears throat> you have physical education uh, which is of paramount importance uh, so all those so we have questions based on that so uh, is there a proper planned class for that are all those children being oper given opportunities for that have, have we got a full-time teacher or is the teacher uh, on a contractual basis or part-time basis uh, is the ch teacher qualified are the students enjoying those classes are the is the child uh, learning from that is the curriculum that is being uh, taught uh, approved and uh, integrated as per the cbse protocols so all this comes in the co-curricular uh, that is the co-scholastic domain in the next, uh, that is part number three, that is uh, infrastructure. So infrastructure, of course, as teachers, we can't do much. It's mainly the responsibility of the principal and the senior management. That is the, how the classrooms are maintained. What are the facilities that you are giving to the students? Uh, whether it is ventilated, what is the water facility, electricity? Do you have a, a generator a backup when there is no electricity? How is the lighting and ventilation? Is it Are we using eco-friendly material? Are there curtains or there is excess heat? Uh, a playground and sports facilities, all this. So it's basically domain three is basically uh, done by the uh, principal and senior level uh, people. Uh, so as teachers, probably we, we will not be uh, in a position to give suggestions on this. Suggestions we can give, yes, but we cannot rate or do anything about it, right? Then uh, we have the fourth domain, that is human resources. So human resource will be all people involved, all the stakeholders involved, right? So there has to be a collaborative effort between parents, uh, staff members, teaching and non-teaching staff, the alumni, uh, the community in general. So we can call uh, people who are knowledgeable uh, for lectures in our school. We can tap the potential of our alumni associations, uh, the so human resources basically very integral part of any uh, school policy so are the is the school giving a positive working environment for all these people because unless there is a positive environment in the school the teacher cannot give his or her best so the best outcomes are always uh, you know uh, achieved when the environment is conducive for learning and if the teacher is unhappy obviously the that anger will obviously go on to the students and it's not going to be a happy place at all. Uh, so that's that's a big drawback. So teachers have to be happy people. We need to create happy uh, classrooms. The joy of learning has to continue, right? So this is important. So schools, uh, the school staff, parents, students, alumni, all the community, that is our domain number four. Now, after domain number four comes the five, that is inclusive practices. So inclusive practices, uh, it's again very important we uh, it's an important domain are we having adequate uh, resources for children with special needs with disabilities are we having a ramp can uh, is is are, are we having a lift in the school are we having training programs to uh, sensitize the other students uh, regarding the disability factors are we having any support services for the students uh, with disabilities all this comes in inclusive practices, right? So every student, irrespective of their 
rates are equal and we have to provide equal opportunities for everyone. So equality in the diversity, inclusion in whatever circumstances have to be provided, whether in, in terms of games or co-curricular activities, sports, uh, are we providing transport to them? <clears throat> so is there any helper uh, assigned for them? So all this. So all barriers have to be removed for them. So that is our domain number five. Domain number six is management and governance. Again, management and governance may not be, uh, you know, so relevant for uh, teachers at the middle school or senior school or any level. But if they are coordinators at the senior level, then of course, as coordinators, how are they coordinating the uh, the whole curriculum? How are they, <clears throat> what is the relationship that they are maintaining with the teachers, with the principal? Uh, how is the oral and written communication? Are, is everything being explained properly? How are the finances being taken off care of? Are the teachers being paid? Uh, is the collection of fees uh, happening properly? Is the fee structure okay or is it exorbitant? Um, how is the admission process that is taking? Is it transparent? Is everything on, on the school website or is given as a written document? So all this comes in the management and governance. That is again domain number six. Again, it is uh, basically uh, a domain which the leadership of the school has to think about uh, what are the core values that they believe in. So domain seven, again, uh, leadership, again, the principal and senior management. So it's basically a questionnaire which the school principal and the vice principal or the senior people have to do it. That is, what is the vision and mission of the school? Uh, uh, how is the leadership acting on <clears throat> certain areas of the school? Are they creating uh, situations for people to grow in the institution? Is equal opportunity being given to all the teachers? Uh, is there any preferential treatment being given? Is somebody, uh, you know, uh, uh, if somebody is trying to give an idea, uh, is that taken well? Uh, is somebody being put down due to uh, various reasons? So, uh, opportunity, all this comes under leadership. So, a good leader is somebody who identifies talents in other people and gives them opportunities. Okay, the leader doesn't do everything. Leader allots responsibilities. The leader will always know whom to uh, allot and how good uh, outcomes can be generated by allotting to different people. So leader should be sensitive to the context, the social context, the administrative context. And obviously it is the leader who brings out the best in a school. So the leader has to strive for innovation in the school. Uh, unless the leader strives for innovation, there will be no innovation. Teachers will not innovate. Then students will also suffer. So domain seven is again about leadership. Uh, so the principal and all will be involved in this. Benefactory, domain number eight, benefactory satisfaction. Are the students satisfied with what is happening in the school? Are they given an opportunity to express their opinion or they are just asked to close their mouth? And it's only obedience. Are they involved in the decision making? Are they suggesting policies? Is there a student's council uh, which helps the school in their daily matters? How then comes the satisfaction of the teachers? Very, very important. Are the teachers satisfied with uh, what is happening in the school? Are they given a chance to express their opinion? Do they get opportunities? Uh, are the feedback of the teachers taken periodically for improving and planning uh, the resources of the school further? Office staff, very integral. Are, are Is feedback taken from them? Are their opinions and suggestions taken? Uh, the, the principal himself, uh, is he or she satisfied with the whole school? Because the principal has to be a happy person, then the school becomes a happy person, right? So it's it's, it's from top to bottom, top to bottom approach. So that's it. So all the review, the satis all the principal is also a stakeholder in this. So uh, are the parents happy about it, right? Are the parents given an opportunity, a platform to express their opinion? Can the parents contact the teachers? Can the parents contact the principal? Is there feedback from them? <clears throat> are the alumni involved in the school activities? Uh, are they, uh, is their resources and their expertise brought into the school for the benefit of the school students? Is the community at large happy? <clears throat> that is important. Right? So these are the these are the eight domains that uh, we have to, the questionnaires that we have to be ready about uh, so that uh, we can do this assessment. 
So uh, finally, as you know the eight domains now and what are the questions that you can expect for self-assessment and outside assessment, this uh, total is 84 items. And we said that we could score 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So <clears throat> if I'm scoring 4 out of 4 in a question, then if I have 13 questions, I'll be scoring 52. So this is the full score. The total score is 52, 56, like that. In the eight domains, if I get all four, I will get 336. So every school is going to get out of 336. So you may get 300 or 200 or 100 or 50, depending on uh, the eight domains, how many you are scoring. So these are the eight domains. And accordingly, you will be getting a score out of this. So this is the, the whole process of SQAA that is going to happen. And uh, many schools have already studied the document and started implementing the self-assessment part. And uh, obviously, at the moment, it is not mandatory, but there will be a time when it is going to be mandatory. The external internals, they've already started. The external assessment is soon going to take place. So I think every school uh, has to be ready with the documentation of this whole process. So I hope I was able to simplify this document a little bit for the uh, understanding uh, of the educators and I'm sure uh, our students are going to benefit uh, by this whole documentation process because actually it's not only documentation, it is an introspection of what we are doing and how we can get better. So on this note, I want to thank all of you for joining in this session and <clears throat> if there are any doubts, you can uh, put it in the chat which is uh, the live chat and I will be happy to answer it in the chat itself and uh, thank you all for joining once again and uh, hope to see you soon for the next session whenever that is. Thank you so much for joining once again. Thanks.